critics and odds makers anointed the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers as the teams to beat this upcoming NBA season. The reasons are quite obvious. The Nets have the trio of Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Kevin Durant, supported by the returning LaMarcus Aldridge, Olympian Patty Mills, and quality veterans Blake Griffin and Paul Millsap. The Lakers, on the other hand, have the dynamic duo of LeBron James and Anthony Davis, but this time accompanied by a triple-double beast in Russell Westbrook. They also bulked up their core with the additions of former All-Stars and NBA champions like Dwight Howard, Rajon Rondo, Trevor Ariza, DeAndre Jordan, and Carmelo Anthony. Some are doubting whether the Lakers could still pull it off again. Owing to the strong competition in the Wild Western Conference, the challenge from recently crowned champions the Milwaukee Bucks, and the Nets that would be coming from the East. Not to mention, the team's average age at 30 years old being the oldest in the league. In spite of these, there is no question that the team is one of the most talented in the NBA. And barring any circumstances, we still believe that the Lakers are the team to beat. What's up, Hoop fans? Chip here providing your dose of a game-high video where we will talk about the impact of the Westbrook acquisition, the veterans as their X-Factor, and the little things that the Lakers need to take care of to go all the way. But before we go Hollywood, like, share, and leave a comment, and be updated with our latest videos by clicking subscribe and ringing the bell icon. The Lakers made one of the more significant acquisitions when they traded for Russell Westbrook in exchange for Kyle Kuzma, Montrez Harrell, Contavious Caldwell Pope, and the draft rights to Isaiah Jackson. Westbrook was one of the top caliber players in the league, being a walking triple-double every year, but the trade was frowned upon due to some issues of the Lakers giving up significant personnel and the Brody being a questionable fit for the franchise. Doubts were raised around Westbrook for being ball dominant. For the past couple of seasons, he has piled up the stat sheets across the board. Most people think though his style does more harm than good. Case in point was during the 2019-2020 NBA season when his team, the Houston Rockets, performed well below expectations, despite him teaming up with former OKC teammate James Harden. They were eliminated in the second round of the playoffs, coincidentally, by LeBron, AD, and the Lakers. It was this style of play that many feared he would bring to Tinseltown, the style of play that may well hinder the team rather than help them at all. We know that King James also likes to have the ball in his hands and wants to orchestrate. Bringing a player in the same mold, but more temperamental and unpredictable, was not a good move. At least, that is what most people think. But Brody is one of the most superb, athletically gifted players in the league. It is hard to argue against the 22.2 points per game, 11.5 rebounds, and 11.7 assists that he brings to the table. To have him in your lineup is to give your team a fighting chance though he does not necessarily make you a contender. The Washington Wizards did not make the playoffs in recent years before Westbrook's arrival. Making him run with the King and the Brow, however, puts the Lakers head and shoulders above others in terms of talent. The Lakers won in 2020 and could have made a deep run in last season's playoffs had it not been for the injury bug, which, let's face it, is part of the game. Instead, they were eliminated by Devin Booker, Chris Paul, and the Phoenix Suns, who went all the way to the finals but falling short against the Bucks in six games. The heavy minutes took a toll on the seemingly ageless LeBron James and AD's tender lower body. With Westbrook on the lineup, the possible significant mileage could be reduced with Russ being younger, taking on the heavy load as the season progresses. A healthy LeBron and AD spelled trouble for the rest of the NBA. Even with chemistry issues and questionable firepower, the Lakers were able to win a title with James and Davis playing good music together. Looking at it closely, the main reason Westbrook was brought on board was to preserve the health of the Lakers' dynamic duo. Not to mention, head coach Frank Vogel can manage the myths of LeBron and Davis. It allows him to significantly reduce the load of the two without sacrificing either playmaking or rebounding. Even during their championship run, the Lakers have trouble when either one of them goes to the bench. Having Westbrook solves that problem. Will it affect their chemistry at all? The truth is, LeBron has managed well to play with fellow superstars. He never had problems with Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in Miami, and even if Cleveland's Kyrie Irving decided to part ways with the King, the desire to be the top dog did not lead to on-court issues during their time. In short, LeBron could tame the unpredictable Westbrook and have him get with the program just like everybody else. 
but will Westbrook really be tamed? In truth, Westbrook has no problems playing with fellow superstars as well. A good example, even if it was eons ago in Oklahoma City with KD and the Beard, they made it to the 2012 NBA Finals. He has also shown willingness to play with Paul George and Carmelo Anthony in the same team a few years ago. Though it did not lead to much playoff success, this was due to other factors, but certainly not because of the lack of willingness. And in the Lakers, he has an organization that has a proud winning tradition and players who are proven winners. In all probability, he may actually just buy into the system. Well, the idea of Westbrook having his own way and not buying into the system is actually a total myth. A continuous playoff run, no matter how short, will not be possible at Oklahoma City if he did not buy into Billy Donovan's system. That he became the player that he is was equally attributable not only to his talent, but the role he has to play under Donovan. The key is for Vogel to utilize Westbrook that benefits purple and gold, period. That problem, however, is a good one, a welcome development for a franchise wanting to reclaim the title. The Lakers made a massive overhaul with their lineup. Kuzma is now gone, and so are other key players Caldwell Pope, Mark Gasol, Caruso Alex Caruso, and Markeith Morris, even the disappointing Andre Drummond. Westbrook is being joined by Laker returners Dwight Howard, Trevor Ariza, and Rajon Rondo. Former Clipper DeAndre Jordan goes back to LA, but this time for the purple and gold. And LeBron was finally able to lure his draft classmate in Carmelo Anthony. D12 and Grand Theft Rondo were instrumental in the last Laker title run. The decision to upgrade their roster backfired, but now they are back and Vogel hopes that they have not lost a step to provide quality minutes for the team. This was certainly the case for Howard, who provided quality minutes for the Philadelphia 76ers last season. On the other hand, things could be quite tricky for Rondo. He did not have much of an impact for the Clippers last season. With Westbrook in their lineup, he may not need to play the number of minutes he used to have, but his high IQ and playmaking ability are always a big help. Ariza won a title as a key part of the Lakers in 2009, playing alongside Laker great Kobe Bryant. Though he has since became a journeyman, he is still one of the more above-average perimeter defenders in the league. With him, Rondo, and Dwight, the Lakers now have that defensive edge they were sorely lacking in the critical moments last season. After all, isn't it that defense wins championships? Or so they say? Carmelo Anthony may already be in the twilight of his career. He may be about to hang up his sneakers, if not for the allure of that missing hardware. Joining the Lakers could be a fitting swan song, and what better way to end his career than teaming up with his high school rival and draft classmate in LeBron James. A few of their strengths in 2020 was flexing their muscle inside and making their presence known on the defensive end. Melo's perimeter shooting could actually be able to help spread the floor for them. Here's the thing, whether Melo could make significant contributions on both ends remains to be seen. But one thing is for sure, Anthony's perimeter play may come in handy as he is still one of the game's best scorers. If his role remains a question mark, that of DeAndre Jordan is certainly a no-brainer. They bring him in to add ceiling, contribute in rebounding, as well as on defense, which is what he is known for back in his days in LA. The Clippers, that is. If utilized properly, DeAndre Jordan could still be a nightmare matchup for other teams in the pick and roll. With LeBron being one of the high IQ players who likes to use the pick and roll to his advantage, and with Westbrook one of the more explosive guards in the league, the Lakers could have a field day in the paint. It may even well be Lob City 2.0, this time under purple and gold. Despite everything he said, the health of the king and the brow will still determine whether the Lakers will go places, whether they will strike gold and bring home the bacon. It is safe to say, however, that with new reinforcements, the load and heavy minutes shared by LeBron and AD could be managed properly. Vogel hopes that less mileage will lead to less injuries and that his two best players would be available when it matters. It remains to be seen how big of an impact the other shooters the Lakers acquired in the offseason, such as veterans Wayne Ellington and Kent Bazemore and the young Kentucky Wildcat Malik Monk. As the season progresses, they may tinker their lineup to add additional outside shooting or leave everything as is and work on their chemistry. But as to where the team stands with regard to the rest of the NBA, 
yes, they are the team to beat. The Nets may have better scorers, but the Lakers possess the defensive edge and have players that are proven winners. All of these make the Lakers the favorite pick to win the championship. Let us hear what you think. Do you agree that Purple and Gold can get Banner 17 this season? Or will it be a failed experiment with their so-called oldies? Sound off in the comment section, but keep it simple, guys. Talk to us also on our Facebook and Instagram pages, and listen to our past episodes on the NBA on our podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Stay safe, guys. We'll see you around.